I'm uh, Brad Jones. I play the cinema snob. Uh, I do like the year in retrospectives too. And uh, was oh, I wrote a book too, so I also got that. <laughs> uh, I'm Rob Walker. I uh, co write the Nostalgia Critic, uh, do some side characters, and also work on some fan description stuff. And uh, I'm from Mackinac Island. I know the C is pronounced like an F, so. <laughs> <laughs> the ferry was really short to get here. <laughs> Um, I'm Malcolm Ray. I am a voice actor, and I play various characters on the Nostalgia Critic, Manscription, and other Channel Awesome videos. I'm Walter. Uh, I've been on Nostalgia Critic a whole bunch of times now, just doing a uh, Fanscription top five back in the day, awesome comics, um, Batman, fan, or, uh, Twilight Silver Zone, a lot of different stuff. Hi everyone, my name is Tamara Chambers, and I am an actress on Nostalgia Critic, and that's it. <laughs> uh, hi everybody, I'm Jim Jaraz. Uh, occasionally I play a character on the Nostalgia Critic, um, and I build uh, props and costumes and sets and stuff that uh, need to be made. Um, and yeah, and I'm working on a new web series that's going to be coming soon called what? Space Trash, so what? keep the other guys going. And down there is our Twitch queen doing exactly what she does, being right. Twitch queen! Yeah. stuff with like YouTube and uh, uh, movie reviews and stuff like that uh, for a long time and um, just, just double check it. It's not up yet, correct? It is. It is? Oh, fantastic. Oh, oh, wonderful, wonderful. Oh my god, fantastic. All right, so we can start start proper. Fantastic. Oh, Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, so uh, this panel is called Movies Everybody Disagrees With You. Um, and oh, really, we're, we're going to go down the line and say, you know, one that we've all had, everybody disagrees with. But then we're really going to make it uh, all about you. We're going to turn it uh, on you here, because this really is kind of uh, your panel. Uh, because there's always a thought that, uh, you know, like, well, it's just what you like about a movie or really any form of art is just, it's map, it's sight. This is objectively good, this is objectively bad, there is no in between. It's like flipping a coin, it's that heads or tails, was it good or bad? And that's not really how it works. It's the same thing as seeing anything in the world that you like, any kind of form of art and stuff like that, that uh, can really speak to you and, you know, touch you and stuff, or it can just really make you mad and really have the opposite uh, reaction. And what I always find is that when you find someone that has a different point of view, instead of trying to shove your point of view in their face, you can find out more about a person by their differences. You know, what did they like about a film? Maybe it makes you look at the film in a different way. Or maybe it doesn't have an impact on you at all, but you found out more about that person and uh, what their likes and uh, dislikes are and stuff like that, their personality. Uh, so that's pretty much what this is going to be. And before we start, like I say, we usually go down the line and all mention a movie uh, that usually every Everybody disagrees with us on, and um, I'll go ahead and start here. Uh, one, I, I don't know why, I always keep coming back to this one, because uh, I really, really like it, but I've not read the book, and everyone I've read the book hates this movie, but I really love the hell out of it. Uh, Ender's Game came out years ago. So I can already see the reactions like, oh! <laughs> no, I, I, I get that because- I did read the book, and I was like, it's all right. Yeah, it, like, but most people I've read it absolutely love the book and don't like the way the movie uh, was done. But, but what I really enjoyed about it was that there's so many stories about the chosen one, and they're just the chosen one. That's it. And they just have to overcome some obstacles, usually the, just physical obstacles, whatever, and that's it. Neo, I, I feel like in the Harry Potter movies, I got a lot of that just, oh, slay a dragon, I don't know, don't be evil. Like, that's it. I really like that this the kid in this has to go through this struggle of how much of his humanity does he hold on to and how much does he have to give up to do what's right and even what is right. And I feel like the whole movie is building up to this moment where he has to make a big choice. I thought the payoff of it was so harsh and so good and so telling and I and did not compromise, I felt like. Again, for someone who has not read the book, uh, I was really impressed with uh, a lot of really coming forward with like how these struggles have to be confronted and how much, like I said, do you have to hold on to being a person? How much do you have to just turn that off to achieve your goal? And is the goal worth it? All of that I found really fascinating. And I wanted to see more of in stuff like The Matrix and Harry Potter and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, so that's mine. How about you, Brad? I did an episode recently on this movie called Skullduggery. I don't know if any, it's, it's kind of, a, it's pretty obscure, but like it's from 1983. When you look up anything about this movie, it's 
100% negative. So I went into it with that mindset. I also thought it was going to be more of a horror movie. What it is, is this Canadian comedy that is about D&D, &D, in which one is like possessed by a demon. So I thought it was going to be more of a horror movie, but it's actually a giant parody of Satanic Panic of that era. <laughs> and the movie is so random with its jokes, it's unpredictable. It's got actors from one of my favorite comedies called Screwballs in it. So it is like this kind of satire on, again, Satanic Panic, but in this horror universe. And I, I thought it was really, really, really underrated. And But it is so rare that it's, I think the whole movie is on YouTube. <laughs> in great quality, I'm sure. <laughs> um, Mine's kind of just a whole genre of films, which is the, I call them the blank check films, where a director got just good enough that the studio's like, okay, do what you want. And so nobody can say no. And this is where we get like craziness, like Batman Returns is one of my favorite Batman movies. Uh, Wonder Woman 84, which is just insane. Um, Gremlins 2, The New Badge, Joe Dante said it was the most unnecessary of sequels. Uh, but just entire films like that, David Lynch's Dune, that are just like, you can kind of see just the director's mind just put straight out without any editing. And I'm like, even if they're bad movies, and a lot of times they are, they're just so fascinating to watch, and I love them. It's like Alien, I admire its purity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one I kind of bring up every year, but I like Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. <laughs> and, yeah, and, um, you know, when it originally came out, I, it felt like I was the only one that liked it. Um, but that's because I kind of ironically liked it because I knew that Sam Raimi didn't want to make that film and he was kind of like jabbing back at the studio. So it was like a very artfully done, uh, you know, stick it to the man kind of thing because he didn't want to, you know, do all of that. So he, he shoved as much as he could in there. He's like, oh yeah, you want Venom? You want Sandman? You want Hobgoblin? You want Greek? You know, like all of them. Um, I, I thought it was funny. Like, it just seemed like he was kind of trolling the studios and the producers. But, um, yeah, it just seems like uh, it's actually come back into the zeitgeist more as a meme. So people, yeah, so it seems like people appreciate Spider-Man 3 for the memes now. Uh, but also, just look at how artfully he jabs back. <laughs> it's intentionally done. It's not like... He jabs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was excellent. Like mommy did. I like that. <laughs> Uh, this may be a choice uh, recently because I just last night watched the Netflix Sly documentary, the Sylvester Stallone documentary. It's really good. Um, but I don't hate Rocky V, man. I, I actually, uh, I've liked it more as time has gone on. And as that character has gotten older, uh, and you look at some of the later movies, when you look back at Rocky V, it's more in line with the original movie and what they did in Rocky Balboa and where kind of he is in uh, the Creed films, too. Um, in comparison to like Rocky three and four, which four I like as the big popcorn movie, but it's not like really true to the character. It's this weird revenge movie in <laughs> Soviet Russia. Um, but uh, yeah, Rocky five has a lot of the emotion back into it, and it's definitely not perfect. It's not one of the greats, but I think there's a lot to admire about it. And there's that scene when Rocky goes back into Mickey's gym that's just been you know broken down for years and years, and they have that flashback scene with him and Mickey in the ring. It's one of the best scenes in the entire series. Um, and I think if they just made a couple little tweaks to Tommy Gunn here and there, I think that could have been a really nice arc. It didn't work out exactly the way I think Stallone wanted it. I think a lot of people think the same thing about that. But it's a movie that I still really enjoy, and the more I watch it, I, I like it even more. <laughs> so, Rocky Five for me. Um, so I grew up with this franchise, and uh, a lot of the uh, installments of it get a lot of flack. But I just, got, I get so much comfort from this series that even if it's not perfect, even if it's not great, I just love taking in this content. So The Last Jedi is the movie. Um, I love The Last Jedi. I saw it and was just so into it. And uh, I've had many people explain why it's not uh, quote unquote good, but I just love it. I love it. It brings me so much joy. <laughs> That's certainly a lot better than Rise of Skywalker. Oh. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's just like, oh! Yeah. <laughs> Straight to the heart with a lightsaber. <laughs> uh, for me, I'd have to say uh, Predator 2. 
I think it's uh, actually kind of like a better than Predator 1. Um, it was not a popular stance when that came out. All my friends uh, ridiculed me for years for that. Uh, but I stand by it. And uh, I thought it was great. I thought they did the, the perfect thing of taking that sequel instead of putting it back in the jungle or something like that and making just a, a redo of the first one. Um, putting it slightly in the future, which was a hot choice, but uh, I thought uh, Danny Glover was amazing as a, as a lead in it and stuff. Um, I think that was what we got the introduction of, really that was the seed of the Alien vs. Predator uh, franchise. Um, just because a uh, prop guy was like, hey, we cool to stick a alien skull on this trophy wall, and that was it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Predator 2. Hey, then I'm back here. All right, so, uh, so we are actually going to open it up uh, to y'all now. I think what we're going to do, um, I don't know why there's a random chair there just in the middle, but we're going to have people, uh, why, we have a microphone here, because again, we want to hear you. We want, you know, people speaking like and stuff like that. And what do you think, yeah. audience? Uh, um, and we're going to go ahead and uh, anyone that has a movie that you disagree with, uh, whether you like and everyone hates or you hate everyone likes, uh, go ahead, just line up there in front of the uh, microphone there, the microphone in the uh, in front of the table there. No pushing, no shoving. Be polite. <laughs> um, can I ask a really stupid thing? Oh, a really stupid thing. Yes, what? Walter, your white suit is making the white balance freak out. <laughs> <laughs> if you could you like flip flop people. with Brad or yeah, something? Holy <laughs> crap, something whiter than Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, are you sure? Yeah, it's not like bleeding over into that. <laughs> We're making like that triangle from Ghostbusters, like the electricity of like the whiteness is just going to dance. Gonna open up Ghoster. <laughs> the state of Marshmallow Man's gonna come out. It's not gonna be as white as us. <laughs> I'm blind. I'm just too pure. <laughs> and uh, real quick, I will just give you a heads up. Uh, right now, yeah, anyone has there? I had shingles several months back. I'm okay, but I do still have this fatigue. So I. It's been going in and out of it. If you see me starting to go like this, <laughs> I'm not asleep. I can hear you. It's just how the fatigue works. I apologize. But I, I can hear everything. I'm very excited to hear uh, what you all have to say and everything. So, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, grab the microphone there. We shall follow and what does he do? <laughs> oh, 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 did that? Get it, uh, can you get it, it cannot go farther. <laughs> okay, all right. We will have you sit down at the chair <laughs> and give your thoughts. Like you're talking to Congress. Well, the Congress. Yeah. Have you ever been a member of the Congress? <laughs> 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 oh, go ahead. Sorry about that. Oh, you're fine. No, it's cool. Fine. It's you don't so, take time to practice. I actually have two choices, but I can't decide. Would you prefer a movie? Uh, wait, we have a long line. We're going to need one choice. I know, but would you prefer a movie that I like or a movie that... Oh, whatever you want, man. It's about you. This is your moment. Tell us right. what you love. Tell us what you love. All right. Um, I really like the 1998 uh, Joe Dante film, Small Soldiers. Oh, okay. Yes. There, there's a lot of people that like that one. Yeah, what do you enjoy about it? Well... I really like that it does feel like it's a mixture of Toy Story and Gremlins, in a way. And the thing is, um, I know you, uh, I know you did your review and you didn't care about it that much, and because you you said it felt uneven. Well, there's actually a reason for that. It's because of the production, because it was going to be a darker film, but then halfway through, sponsors like Kenner and Burger King came in and said, try to make it more kid friendly. But they'd already filmed half the movie. Studio tried to change it. <laughs> you know, and, and that's so that's so interesting because the film is actually about that too, where they have this toy line and then they're inter interrupted, like, no, switch it around, make them the bad guys and then the good guys. It's the same thing. They have an idea, and then they're told, no, 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 make it more kid friendly, more kid friendly. Uh, and so it is funny that it's about that uh, in a sense. And um, I, I think there's something too about uh, when you can see the unevenness in a film, but you kind of let slide because you can see what it's trying to do, and you give it a little bit more slack for that, so I, I can totally understand that. And, and I, I just like the, I like a lot of the designs of the characters, like the Gorgonites were inspired by Masters of the Universe and the Commandos by G.I. Joe, so it's sort of a way, it's like a meta Hasbro versus Mattel. Yeah, like I'm so, clo I'm so close to liking it, like I said, because it is an even, it kind of threw me off, but it, when I review that, a lot of people said they liked it too, so you're definitely not alone also, on that, man. Also, you, uh, they got in trouble with Burger King, you know, the... You know the controversy. Not for the rodeo burger. <laughs> no, you, you know you know the controversy for like McDonald's and Batman. Yeah, yeah, it's like they the had same a thing. similar they had a similar situation. That's interesting. That, because they got a PG thirteen rating, and so some Burger King locations didn't even carry the toys. That's why they're so. Rich. That's it. As long as they carry the rodeo burger, that's all that matters. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. 
Hey, next. Golf class. <laughs> so this is a franchise for, that I feel like I've been on the wrong side of for like almost 30 years, where um, Batman. Um, Which Batman? All of them in different ways. I'll oh, okay. try, try to be very brief. Um, I actually prefer the original Batman to Returns for a number of reasons. Thank Dire you. Burton fan, but Returns is odd. Um, mm -hmm. The biggest part of it for me, and this is, I recently got to see the three Nolan films back to back to back, and I acknowledge they're great films, but I feel like they've led to, combined with DC for 40 years, looking at two comics, like Dark Knight Returns and, and um, Killing Joke, taking Batman in this very anti-comic book way. Hmm. Yeah, where, I, I know what you're saying. Like, on one end you have the, the animated series, and on the other end you have I'm the GD Batman. <laughs> and so, I acknowledge that the Nolan films are good films, but I feel like their legacy is going to be doing more harm than good, because I don't feel like you'd get the DCEU in the way it is without, oh look at these Nolan films, we have to do everything exactly like this! So you have the Batmobile running over people's heads with their tires. <laughs> Combined with the fact that it's like, well, look at these Marvel films. Now we need a giant extended universe, and we need to make it happen yesterday. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I know what you're And that was my fear, too. Honestly, when the Batman came out, that was my fear. It was going to be too much like Nolan. I'm glad they got more of, like, the detective. Not only the detective, but kind of the silliness in there. A lot of people say, well, it needs to it's have... Dark, but it is a little silly. A, a lot of people say, when you say have more of a sense of humor, and I just strongly disagree. I think that film is hilarious. It yeah. just has a super dark sense of humor. Well, and when um, a Batman, like the first trailer when you see that like prolonged sequence of him just viciously beating the criminal. Yeah, like, and that's oh, hilarious. I agree. <laughs> and then you get Joker being what it is and being like, I walked out of the Joker being like, this is, how have we gotten here to where it's like, he's dancing around in a child's hospital and the gun's dropping out kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what it is? I, I, I'm okay with Joker because it is its own thing. I like, this is what I like about DC, and hopefully they'll keep doing it. It sounds like they kind of are. I like it when they're their own thing. Yeah, I like I when something doesn't have, have to connect to something else. I like we're going to do like a Batman or even a Bull movie, but we still have like the Patterson, the Batman. No, I loved Wonder Woman. Like I could have cared less her in that Justice League movie or any of the other ones. It's just like, just let them be their own thing. Yeah, so um, no, I'm with you. I like that there are enough peaks and valleys in now that these characters last so long that we can get different versions. They don't have to stick to what's just popular at the time. Uh, definitely. So awesome. Thank you so much. I just, I just want to laugh because like, golf clap. Golf clap. As, as he's saying all this, there's a guy dressed as the Joker with like this perfect Joker smile. <laughs> I'm just staring at him talking about Batman. I was like, I, I don't know. Something may happen. <laughs> hey there. Hi. I have to say I like a lot of the Disney sequels for the same for the reason that I love bad fiction. It's a guilty pleasure. Dude, boy, do we have a show for you? <laughs> Um, do, uh, and, and so you said some of them you legit like and some you just like because they're like guilty pleasures, you get out the kind yeah. of thing. It's, uh, okay. I love a bad fan fiction. It's, I, I read, ba I read bad fan fiction because it's great, it's hilarious, <laughs> and the fact that people are being creative and dumb, sure. Yeah. <laughs> there are definitely some, I mean, we, we've all reviewed just and talked about, like, enough. they're just bland enough. Uh, some of them are pretty crazy, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I kind of well. And then some of them go so crazy that it almost ends up being good. Like like Cinderella three is kind of legit, almost pretty good. For that. Uh, and yeah, and that one just goes. If you told me the plot of that, I'd be like, okay, I'm done with it. Why'd I even try? This is the stupidest thing that they're doing with me. But it's like time travel in Cinderella. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> God, they, but, talk about the Disney Thanks, remake. Right? No, 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 the sequels. Oh, the, the sequels. sequels. Oh, okay. Um, you have Cinderella time travel? You have yeah. Cinderella 3? <laughs> you have? <laughs> <laughs> of course I have. Tamara, we've seen everything. No, Tamara, I'm not kidding. You will legit love this movie because it's mostly focused on the villains. The villains go back in time and they make it where the sister, if the shoe fits on the sister, and Cinderella has to break into the castle to convince the prince. No, I was there. I was the one that you were dancing with. It's actually kind of fun. <laughs> there is a chase scene that takes place in a giant man-eating pumpkin, and she has to break out of this thing while the cast has been turned to this evil human that's like has this whip. <laughs> it's like trying to lighten. It's insane. 
it's, saying it's some fear and loathing about Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah but, 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 but it's legit, that. like, kind of good, too. Like, it yeah. doesn't it, it doesn't quite work, because there's weird stuff with, like, holding the hand thing, which is really weird. But, like, no, you, I'm not even kidding. You would love oh, no, this say. movie. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it goes, but, but that's, I think that's what you're talking about, where it's, like, because kind of people don't care, some of them did catch out. Well, you know what? We can do whatever we want then, can't we? And some just clearly phoned it in. They're like, just do the first one again, whatever. But others were like, you know, let's, let's experiment. Let's try something here. And some of them legit did, and they did. There's two I thought legit worked. The second Tarzan, which is weird, uh, which is like a prequel. And then the second 101 Dalmatians. Why? I don't know. Like, like, but they legit, like, let's get the the atmosphere of the original and the heart and everything, the art style. And and it gets weird again with Corella wants to be an artist <laughs> and she has this abstract revelation. It's But they're like, I don't get just have it on video in like a couple months. And it, some of them legit kind of work. Hey, you were saying something? Did you see the the Stitch sequels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. those are good. That, that, that yeah. was what inspired my thought on that too. Was Lilo and Stitch two is like, oh, it's just it's a fan fiction sick thing. And why does Lilo not work? Because I didn't like Lilo. They didn't write her well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, it, it, it's strange. Some of them, like I said, there's only two I can say these are objectively good. But there's several of them where I'm like, I can't say I had a bad time, you know, watching it. So, no, I, I definitely get where you're coming from. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Hey there. Okay, so uh, as someone that's been getting back at the tokusatsu, you know, Power Rangers and stuff, honestly, looking back at Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie, in my own mind, it's like, yeah, this is actually par for the course. The complete insanity of Tokusatsu is in this movie, and somehow with the Hollywood budget. And you know, like the, the the most recent one, right? No, I'm talking <laughs> that, about that, the that, '90s. Yeah, right. Oh, the, okay, the '90s. And that's the problem. It's like which oh, Power Rangers? Yeah. Mighty Morphin yeah. Power Rangers, the movie from the yeah. '90s, gotcha. just before the third season. So honestly, I actually looked at a few other Toku films made with toy properties, much like. Power Rangers was made from Super Sentai, mm. and suffice it to say, looking at like the Kamen Rider movies, the lighting's <laughs> similar, it's just darker in there, but here, it's actually more like the actual shows itself. Hmm. Like, seriously, I want you to put this in perspective. I actually watched a couple Kamen Riders and Super Sentai, like a couple episodes here and there, and you would honestly be hard pressed to tell me otherwise that, well, it actually gets goofier over time, basically on purpose. And my uh, a friend of my, uh, uh, Tony, does hack the movies. He was telling me about the original show, and he's like, "No, they fight the devil at the end of one of these seasons." I'm like, "What?" He's like, "You have to see how Japan does the devil in God, this show." Okay. It's yes. just he looks like Devil Boner. He's just a guy with this crazy hair and everything, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's totally nuts. Uh, like, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. So in a strange way, like, the more crazy it goes, at least the more memorable and kind of, like, bizarre you remember it and have fun with it kind of thing. Just I like kinda, that she said a I friend of yours, because Tony's going to clip that out and play it. <laughs> <laughs> you know my friend, the senator. I actually kind of find it crazy, because sometimes when they get more serious on the Power Rangers side, somehow the Sentai becomes a lot crazier. Mm -hmm. Watch Turbo, and then watch Car Ranger. You will know exactly what I'm talking about. It goes completely mental. <laughs> All right, I mean, you're the Power Ranger fan, and any other things you want to add to that? Yeah, I haven't seen too much Super Sentai, so I can't comment on too much of that stuff. But yeah, I mean, Turbo is crazy in, in not a great way. I mean, like the movie itself, the, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, I, some of it holds up, some of it doesn't, honestly. I think it captures a lot of the craziness of the show, but it also tries to do something that's much more Hollywood American based, which doesn't always work. So I understand I, your point of view on that. I honestly think it just helps the insanity. and. No, I hear you. And it gives it more of an identity, too. I say, you remember, there's a lot of bad movies that you just instantly forget about, too. So, plus, the awesome. plus the actors clearly had a lot of fun just doing their own thing at certain points in the movie, so I give it points for that. No, I, I get that. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We found her! <laughs> Carmen! <laughs> the Warrens. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hello. Um, I, the movie I like is the Ghibli uh, Tales from Earthsea movie. As a fan of the books. Oh, okay. I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that the last ten minutes 
are not like good. It's just the big bad. But the rest of the film, the fir first two thirds, very much are in the spirit of the books, and that it is this small story about the the darkness within yourself, and they're very like insular, like kind of it's book story. It's not. There's no big battles. There's no like like politics. It's all about like f finding balance within yourself and the fans about names and of true names, stuff like that. So I think that the, the, the feel and the atmosphere of the movie, for the most part, did capture the feeling of the book until the, the end. But I think if, if this had been released by any other studio, it wouldn't have been as hated because it's the it's Ghibli. Like they've made the great, greatest movie, animated movies of all time, so anything less than that is going to be considered very less than that. There is there is like a pro and con, because like with Studio Ghibli movies, it's like... I haven't seen one that I've hated. Like, so there's there's no Ghibli film that I'm like, I hate that. I think it's it's really, really bad. It's just like, what's better than the others? And like, for me, Earthsea's like near the bottom of the list. So I'm like, it's all right. Like, but but yeah, like I, I read the Earthsea trilogy. I didn't read, I know there's like a, I think there's a fourth one and stuff. And like, somebody said like, maybe it had borrowed from that one. But I was just like, yeah, like some of the spirits here, like Rhymes of Tombs of Atuan or whatever, like where it's like a really low key story. But yeah, it just, it didn't grab me. I was just kind of like, yeah, dude, it's okay. Like, it's not a bad movie, but it's not great. As someone who did not read the books, I really liked it, it kind of what you said until the end, which wasn't awful, but it was very anticlimactic, didn't go anywhere. But uh, I love that. I really felt like you could breathe in that world. I liked those characters. I wanted to know where it was going and everything. Uh, so yeah, I, I still say it's a good movie, honestly. Uh, but, it, but yeah, the ending is uh, underwhelming. And it's coming from someone who has not read And that's kind of what the books did well, was like world building. <laughs> so it did kind of have that, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, you really feel like you can live and breathe in this world. So, awesome, thank you so much. Oh, fine. Oh, fine. Oh, fine. Oh, fine. Oh, fine. Hey there. Hey. Well, uh, obviously, uh, the best James Bond is the guy who interviews Jack Nicholson at the beginning of The Shining. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, you got that. Yeah. I knew Brad would get that <laughs> joke. Thank you, Brad. He, was, he played James Bond in that 50s climax episode oh. where James Bond was American. Oh. Oh. That, that was my joke, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The real one is actually uh, that uh, I... It's a movie that I would have liked it had I seen it when I was 10 years old, but I didn't see it until I was in my mid-20s. I never liked The NeverEnding Story. Oh, really? Okay. I just, I remember seeing it. I remember thinking the effects, honestly, even compared to like the Star Wars movies which came out around the same time, looked pretty bad. Uh, I thought pretty it, solid, I thought. It, it looked at, like, <laughs> it looked like a Disneyland animatronic to me. Uh, I thought the kid who played Atreyu, I never thought he was a good actor. Uh, I always felt sort of like a pre-teens guide to existentialism in such a way that I found very hollow. I just, <laughs> yeah. you know, I just did not enjoy that movie at all. I found it pretty hokey and boring. Like I said, if I'd seen it when I was 10, would have liked it. When I saw it for the first time at 25, I was sort of like, yeah, this isn't good. Well, well, I I'm sorry, you were not in good case. Everybody up here, everybody loves the never-ending story, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, yeah, no, you're really good. Yeah, give me the microphone. Yeah, make a friend. <laughs> I also watched it at 25 for the first time, and I was also underwhelmed by it. I don't think it's bad. I just, I think if I would have seen it as a kid, it would have blown my socks off. I think I would have freaking loved it. But, yeah, it just underwhelmed me a bit. I've yeah. seen Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. 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 now has the soul of a jaded adult. <laughs> I remember it was like to be a small, wondering child. <laughs> but yeah, I, I knew this was one that like everybody in the room would disagree with me on, so that's why I went with that one. Yeah. Cool. I mean, if that's where you thought, you know, fair enough. I, um, I, I also heard from others too. I think I, I feel like when you did that video too, you know, there were people. How dare you and others work out? Like, yeah, it's pretty boring. <laughs> yeah, I, I personally love it, but like, I don't know, hearing that, I can't be like, what are you talking about? It's like, uh, nah, okay. I, I, like I said, I, I you probably saw it when you were a kid for the first time. I, I did, and um, it, it, the ending particularly blew my mind, because I was kind of like, are, are they in the room watching me right now? Like, what is going on when they're like, others were watching him go into the bookstore. Yeah. I mean, I started to go... Hello? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I liked it, but I get what you want. Like I said, I think I would have liked it a lot more had I seen the yeah. ten. No, fair before. enough. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey there. Hey guys. Guys, so one movie that I think get 
most people, well, it's a movie that, that most people don't hate, but not really talk about a whole lot. Uh, and it's honestly one of my favorite Disney live action gym movies. These, like, it's not any of the remakes or whatnot, but it's Tron Legacy. See, so you got oh, I remember that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 it, yeah, it was very divisive, I guess, when it came out. I think because the original had such a diehard cult yes. following. And, um, yeah, I. I thought it was okay for a way. What did you enjoy about it? I loved how, how honestly the world almost felt alive. The neon colors and everything, everything just felt so alive. Like, like it, okay, so don't hit me on this, but I never actually seen the original. Like, like the, Oh, I, I think you like it. Yeah, check it out. I love Love for Tron started when Legacy Sia came out. Out and as a as a gamer and whatnot, not in it, with it feeling like a video game game, I was really into it. With yes. it's a, like. The story is somewhat what uh, not not as good as I remember it, but the, I just love the characters. There's the uh, action sequences, just everything. Thing, and sure, the CGI I sometimes looks looks really bad, especially for for Jeff Bridges. His, his oh, yeah. and that is the one thing I did age well. But the, thing, the thing about that is that he, they may look bad on purpose because well, he's basically a program. I don't think that was. Keep telling yourself that. I'll tell myself that too. To get through it. Yeah, but uh, I, I don't think that was intentional. There are kind of like two things that drive me nuts about that movie. The first is in the opening when Jeff Bridges is just like, "Yeah, then the most amazing miracle happened." The ISOs, I created life. I'm like, you can expand on that or no? Okay, I guess we're just you created life. But um. The other thing is, and I think someone who is at this con might agree with me, is uh, I wanted more Tron. Where's Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> we did, did get, him, get more of him in Tron Uprising. Though. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good true. show, and I liked it, and I was very happy that he was in that. But yeah, I was like, it's called Tron Legacy. I was like, I just, I didn't see, I hardly saw any Bruce. I'm like, come on, man. The one thing I was really blown away with in that movie is how it managed to get the look and feel of the original, but it updated it. Yes. And it updated it in a way that was very unique that I could look at it and say, man, I've never seen that before, but that is also distinctly Tron. I can look yeah. at it and say that is the Tron universe. And that is very difficult to do. That is going to be yeah. a Disney ride. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I was definitely very impressed by that. So, yeah, you're, you're definitely not alone on that, man. Yeah, yeah maybe, it does need, maybe it does need a little one, bit more love. One more thing I'd sure. like to point out. The soundtrack. Soundtrack's amazing. Oh yeah, the soundtrack. The soundtrack is just phenomenal. I can listen to that that throughout my day, and it almost feels like it can make anything epic. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. I, I, even people that didn't like the movie, they're like, "But the soundtrack's amazing." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Very welcome. Yeah. Backpack part. Take that punch. Hey. Hello. Remember, you are under oath. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so I cannot wait to see this pop off throughout the entire room. I hate Winnie the Pooh. What? Oh, oh, it's no. oh, <laughs> you should see the bloody oh, yeah. 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 Brad's like, have you seen bloody honey? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you not enjoy? Well, well, for it's life a living hell. I, I mean, it probably goes without saying, but we're, I'm assuming we're talking about the Disney one, correct? Anything. A anyway, the Pooh. Okay, uh, why don't you like wow. about poor Winnie? Winnie the Pooh is a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sure you didn't see Blood and Honey? <laughs> <laughs> when I think back to like one of the most classic Winnie the Pooh images, it's always like Pooh stuck in the house, like in the hole in Rabbit's house. And he decorates his ass. I love that scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the actual like build up to that scene is who got the munchies, gorged himself on all of his honey, decided, hey, my friend Rabbit is an actual responsible adult, I'll just go over to his place. He goes over, sees Rabbit working in his yard, thinks, huh, I'm not going to ask for permission. I'm going to go around the back of his house, climb through his fire escape, and just gorge myself on all of his honey. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so you put it like that, you're not wrong. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, this reminds me of something, because Rob always made the argument in, the, I'm going somewhere, this in the Lord of the Rings movies, uh, that Sam was the main character the whole time. The story is actually about Sam. I was thinking about that with Wayne, because I'm hearing this, I'm like, boy, you're not 
wrong. I'm like, but, but why do I still like it okay? Like, why do I like him okay? And because you're right, he's the main character. And I start to think like maybe a large part of the story is the other characters. That, not only there are characters' interactions around it, but what I always found interesting about Wade and Pooh is knowing that this is still in a kid's imagination. Like even when he goes to school, these characters are somehow still alive and having adventures, and so, and like their personalities are so, so strong. Really, Christopher awesome. Robin is the sociopath. <laughs> well, but I, but I'm thinking to myself, sort of the idea of like it representing different parts of a personality. You know, kind of, I sort of said the same thing with the movie Nine, where I was like, individually these characters are kind of boring, but when you know they all make up one person, that's kind of interesting. Well, Tigger is certainly the drug-addled hyper side of Chris <laughs> Robin's personality. Well, actually, so, so if you kind of, but if you kind of look at them like the different parts of a person's kind of psyche and personality, and, and even the id. kind of, yeah. Uh, actually, I, all of the Winnie the Pooh characters are kind of based around the personality types and like the Myers Briggs tests that you can take. Well, there you go. And, and I think, well, I don't know if the writer was intentionally thinking of that. I think there is a part that's thinking like, well, okay, like this sort of represents this part of emotion that a lot of people have. This represents the responsible side, the more fun-loving side, the lazier side. The I think my favorite is just like Winnie the, the Pooh. Seven Deadly Sins. <laughs> seven Deadly Sins, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that is something where I feel Ooh, like... Be gluttony. Seven Deadly yeah. Sins. <laughs> if, if, if there was more focus on him and not as much of the other characters, it, maybe I, I would agree more, but I can see why, especially like, you know, I'm assuming like, in your life you work really hard to have things set up and good, and you know some a-hole that comes over and never tries or anything, it just messes everything up. And it's one of those things where it's very easy to dislike a character like that. But I think if you kind of look at it like, I hate putting it this way, but a bit more abstract. I, I, there might be something more there. Um, or maybe it's just always be like, no, nah, just who's a loafer to hell with him, you know, stuff like that, which, you know, it, it, fair enough. But uh, yeah, no, that, that's an interesting take because I was listening to that, like, I mean, she's not wrong. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You have used a phrase a couple times from movies where you say you are cinematically shackled to this character. That's mm. kind of how I feel whenever I watch Winnie the Pooh because no matter where else you go in the story and what other character he's interacting with, he's still there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a line, uh, and I think this is why people like him too, there's a line in one of the movies where they think it's where Robin's missing, which again is so interesting that they're thinking that, no, it's all from him, but he says, uh, Pink goes, oh, I can do stuff with you, you know, like, I can be your friend, and he says, oh, you're my favorite person to do something with, Chris Rob Robin's my favorite person to do nothing with. I think that's kind of what Pooh represents. He's Which, kind yeah, of like, go ahead and shit on Piglet when he's trying to, <laughs> and he's trying to like be a part of Pooh's life. Why not just crush his dreams? <laughs> Don't forget, we are live streaming right now, and somebody in chat said more like Winnie the Poop. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Yeah. You might actually like Blood and Honey, the slasher one. Like the movie's super generic, but I admire it's played straight. So at the end, when Pooh is run over someone's head is standing in front of a burning car and Christopher Robin is pleading with him like, Pooh, you were good once! <laughs> this movie's not good, but I respect it. <laughs> so, so if Pooh is gluttony, then Eeyore is sloth. Yeah. Oh my god, is Kanga lust? Like, yes! 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 Kanga's lust. Y'all are talking way too much about this, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome, but thank you so much. All right, how are you doing, fellas? Good. All right, so probably one of my favorite movies, and actually one that that you t that two of you people really criticize, is the movie Pearl Harbor, directed by Michael Bay. <laughs> oh yeah, you like it? Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. What I like about it is, is a lot of people criticize it because it's not historically accurate. But to be perfectly honest, I never felt that the film's main objective was a historical accurate the representation leading up to the events and to Pearl Harbor as well as the attack itself, but it kind of shed some light on America's sense of innocence and isolationism in the early years of the war, and then how the attack shattered that and how it fueled American resolve to defeat the Japanese. And for the most part, I feel like they did that right. Uh, well, I totally agree that that is what that is trying to do, the same way I feel like Titanic, which is clearly trying to rip off, but I mean, it's like, it's okay if it does it well. Um, it's trying to very much show this is like a fairy tale romance, this is the ship of dreams, so it's gonna be very dreamlike, and that's why I kind of excuse the more simple story in Titanic and stuff. Um, I just didn't get into the, the people at Yeah, all. Roger Ebert had a great line, which was that uh, Pearl Harbor is a two and a, two and a half hours. 
Or it's about how the Japanese stage an attack on American wealth. Yeah, America. bombed yep. America. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. No, no, going back to Titanic, I actually didn't really get that vibe he was trying to rip off Titanic. I actually felt that Michael Bay was trying to capitalize on some of that Hollywood romance answers of yesteryear, like from here to eternity. Well, well, so was Titanic, though. I, I think they're trying to uh, capture that too. And, uh, I, don't, certainly. I don't think Pearl Harbor gets made of Titanic. Was it? Yeah, is it? I'm just gonna say it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, be, yeah uh, initially, from what I read, he wanted to just do a remake of Tora, Tora, Tora. Mm. Or, Which uh, I may have been more interested in because I really like Tora, Tora. Yeah. Tora. Um, and no, and honestly, I think if they went more, if they even shot it more kind of in that vibe and even made it a little cornier, it, I mean, it is pretty corny, <laughs> but but it's it's very Michael Bay corny, you know, which in it, in of itself can have a charm to it, certainly. Particularly if you're doing um, something that's kind of 40s ish. Yeah. I, just like somehow it's like some pieces should have clicked and they didn't. You know, it may be, if it was like an hour and a half movie, yeah. maybe I, I'd give it a little bit more of a pass, like it sort of in its own it, unique way. But but I know what you're talking about uh, with that. And, and I still feel like with... Um, with Titanic, even though there's a lot of focus on, you know, obviously the romance and stuff, they really try to work in, like, this is about the ship, and Pearl Harbor, I kind of forgot it was even in the movie <laughs> until, you yeah. know, like, the bombing yeah, happened. Yeah, like, it wasn't thing. able to balance out outdoor romance. Uh, yeah, sure. so, yeah. Uh, it's by no means, like, they're, like, one of the worst I've ever yeah, seen or anything like that, but, uh, it, no, but I know where you're coming from yeah. uh, with that, certainly. And, in fact, it, I, I find that... And if you were to look at a lot of his other films in contrast, I think Pearl Harbor is actually a much very well directed film by Michael Bay when you compare something like Transformers. The problem was I think the screenwriting by Randall Wall and a Wallace. And I think Wallace. And that to me well, that's yeah, I will, a huge part of it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen yeah I think written films. Yeah, to be perfectly honest, I think if they had made, instead of making it a love trial, they maybe tried a love and loss in which it was initially Danny and Evelyn that were together, and then Danny died of Pearl and that resulted in her rape. <laughs> yeah, like, that, like, would've, that would've been more interesting, yeah, I, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I guess as some retrospect, I seem to like maybe more of the ideas that the film promotes as opposed to that's fair. Yeah, I will say, we don't, yeah, it's not really entirely all Michael Bay's, yeah. like, fault. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's definitely, like, not a great script. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. awesome. Well, thank you so much. Hey. Okay. So, uh, okay. No, no, everyone's uh, probably seen this film and probably will possibly get an NC review on it, but the more, you know, I only hated this movie back Bag, but uh, yeah, the more I'm starting to watch it again, I'm putting to the table Evolution 2001, directed by Amor Ravis. I've I never th seen it. Everyone said it was so bad, I didn't check it out. But I, I, I should check it out. Did, like did, did you like it? I thought, I mean, it's, uh, it's slowly starting to grow on me. So, you know, so you have these two scientists, played by Dave Duchovny and uh, Orlando Jones, oh, Jones, who, Jones, who are stuff. Studying the meteors, uh, Evelyn, you know, the meteors, you know, that uh, rockness, and I, I'm not sure, not sure what terms you right. would describe, but, mm. you know, you have, you discover that the aliens themselves are, you know, the rock is evolving, you know, it starts to grow, and you have, but, yeah, uh, then you have, um, uh, some Shane, Shane William Scott, who are, who is practically, you know, who joins in, you know, who discover, uh, 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 and I'm probably losing my, uh, yeah. No, we agree. We got you. Okay. And then you really just, the more you find, the more you watch it, you learn so much about it, you know, the evolutionary su side, and you just, you know, you, but then there are some weird scenes, like, say, for left, I know Jones gets up, you know, to, on Twitch, so I might get, you know, up, it's, you know, a bug up, it's, uh, but... So, no, so, so, I, mean, I think you would say that on Twitch, it's fine. <laughs> so, so, uh, 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 to Mark, and, and, uh, and then you have Sharon Room Scott attracting this alien bird by singing a Joe Cocker song, You're So Beautiful, just so random. I, it was the first thing I, clip I saw back in my Arab, uh, con yeah, Arab cable network. It just so, it's so weird, but the more I'm starting to watch it, the more I'm fascinated how weird it gets. I definitely have movies like that too where I'll see I'll be like oh I, I did like it the first time and everything and then like it kind of stays with you and then you go back to it years later and you can be like okay I, can, I don't know if I can say this is good but man it it's so weird and random like it does stick with you and I, I don't know I feel like I'm seeing so many movies that are good but are forgettable that imagine kind of appreciating the ones that are not good but I remember them like they do stick with you. Uh, so I definitely see where you're coming from uh, with that one. I haven't seen it. I haven't gotten a request for it. 
uh, before. Uh, so maybe I would check it out uh, down the line. So uh, awesome. Thank you so much, man. And the alien, and then how did it Oh, man, we, we got a long line, man. I'm sorry. We got to keep sorry. it going. <laughs> Thank you so much, though. So fun. So fun. So fun. So most people do not know this movie, and it has been highly debated um, in my cinematography class and club on campus. But um, Christopher Nolan's 2000s Memento. Oh yeah, I oh, really yeah. like. Oh, really, people movie. don't know that movie. Yeah, that was like that's that was a huge big when that came out. But no actually, one that's kind of funny. Yeah, <laughs> it, it does make sense. Yeah, people might remember. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess if you're in college, then you remember. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of freshmen. Um, <laughs> Do people um, not like it, or they just don't know about it? They watch it and they hate it. Oh or my they gosh. don't know it. No culture. And <laughs> I'm from Tennessee, so they don't like anything. <laughs> <laughs> not as much as you like Tennessee, clearly. <laughs> not really. <laughs> so, so, but you really enjoy. Uh, I really the enjoyed the movie, especially nah, movie. after um, I got poisoned by a doctor, and Ooh. one of the side effects was memory loss, oh. and it oh. felt oh. similar to the movie. Mm. So, I, I, oh, I'm trying to figure out why you don't like Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not a conservative Christian. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I, I thought the way they showed it, showing it back, because there's. I feel like a whole movies kind of did this too, the show home movies where they say, well, why are you just shooting it backwards? It feels like a gimmick. And say, because oh, it's like Memento. And Memento. Memento had a very clear reason for doing that. And it was a very effective reason. Because you're right, I think you can really sympathize with this guy about not knowing what's going on, how you could be manipulated by that. And you do see how he's manipulated, but you're with him not knowing what's going on, except you're allowed to actually put together eventually where it all goes, where he isn't, you know, kind of thing. Like, maybe he thinks he is, but you know, he'll be gone soon. It reminded me of well. the movie Clean Slate with Dana Carvey. <laughs> 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 that is a pretty funny movie. But, um, yeah, no, I actually thought it was a very effective uh, <laughs> movie in the way it's done, the way they show one part going forwards, one part going backwards, and do it black and white and color so you can tell them apart and everything. Uh, so you go back there and you tell the volunteer state that we like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's interesting, yeah. Because uh, I, I always just kind of assume everybody liked it, still do, about what that movie was. So yeah, maybe it's, uh, maybe it needs more love. So maybe uh, more people will come around to loving it. So. And awesome. Tamara, um, if you have seen the second Disney movie to Cinderella, um, if you did watch that and you liked it, then there's going to be a part in the third movie, once you finally do get to see that third Cinderella movie, where you might get a little bit irritated due to continuity error. <laughs> so keep that I going. gotta check that out. Also, everyone on Twitch was saying I should have said um, that I love all the air buds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little surprised you did. I'm not going to lie. You and Tamara's never seen a scroll three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if it's necessarily a widely loved movie, but I see a lot of people praising it. The 2018 Hereditary movie, I oh. deeply hate it. Oh. Yeah. It is the first. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, you have to be like crazy, man. I, I watched it once, and it was kind of a one-off watch, and it was kind of forgettable. And I mentioned it to a friend, and I decided I was going to try it again because it was a long time ago, and I. I couldn't get past the first 10 minutes. It is incredibly slow to get into it. Oh, the uh, pacing is kind of bad. You know, it's one of those films, it, it's a different kind of pacing, and I get it when people say, and when I saw it, I also knew by the time we got to the end, I'm like, there's gonna be people that don't like this movie. And I'm totally gonna know why. Uh, it's. Yes, you could argue it was the beginning of like the A24 horror film formula, where it's like you, you can be really slow and stuff like that, but just be bonkers as well, and be really disturbing, but just crazy as hell. I mean, they get the crazy and disturbing pretty well, but it just kind of, they throw away too many things kind of at such random timings that it's kind of iffy. And that, you know, it's funny, because that's what a lot of people like about it, but again, it's so not sort of the traditional flow that I can see someone being like, well, this throws me off my game, and not in a way that's working to the film's advantage, kind of thing. It's just throwing me off. I'm having trouble, like, getting invested because it's the pacing is so strange. Yeah, and also the paranormal 
aspect of it. I'm not a massive paranormal fan. So. <laughs> I, I, that's, I mean, all of that I get. Uh, honestly, at first I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm really thinking back to the movie. I'm like, no, this isn't a film I can be like, how can everyone not love this? It's like, no, that, that checks out. That, that totally, totally yeah. makes sense. So, yeah, no, and again, yeah, there's definitely people that agree with you too. So, uh, yeah, you're definitely not alone with that. Yeah. Uh, so, awesome. Thank you so much. So so fun. Fun. So fun. So fun. Hey! Okay, this one's gonna get a pretty big reaction. Um, it probably was like good and scary when it came out, but 1978's Halloween isn't a good movie in my opinion. I really don't think it is. <laughs> so, uh, so what don't you like about it? Um, there are things I did like about it, I will say that. Uh, like the cinematography, like I think John Carpenter is amazing at setting up a shot and making it out really good. And I thought originally, I'm like, I would like this because the suspense was building and building and building, but it got to a point where it was trying to keep building and it's like, you've already hit a ceiling. You can't build it up anymore in my opinion. Like, there's a scene where she, where the teenage babysitter leaves the door open and, he, and Michael Myers is just standing there. Perfect opportunity to kill doesn't do it. And it's like, you've built up enough suspense. Get to the killing. Well, I, uh, okay, now, now, now to be fair, I think part of that is that he, it's playing to the unpredictability of him, like, will he, won't he, when will he, you know, and stuff like that. Um, it, it, full honesty, I respect the hell out of Halloween. I don't watch it that much. I completely understand people who do and I get into it. I watched the third one a lot. Yeah, he watched the third one a lot. Yeah, with my whole uh, of those yeah, genres yeah, and movies I said yeah. earlier, Halloween 3, that's the one. Yeah, but I'm not a huge slasher killer guy. I think it, it kind of just gets old after a while to me. I do, you know, I do like something more crazy, like, you know, a uh, Well, and stuff I wanted like to that. check it out because I saw uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. Love that. That's movie. phenomenal. Yeah, and, and that is like, different. Oh, John Carpenter directing Halloween. I bet I'll love this. Didn't love it. <laughs> I I thought I would like it more when I saw it too, because I did get. And, and there were surprises in. There's. I still respect the hell of hell of it, but yeah. I'm, it's never really been my thing. But won't either. someone think of Donald Pleasant? <laughs> <laughs> and also, I gotta say, the the teenage babysitters, they are not smart characters. Well, that's just horror like, films. Oh, in let me draw yeah. yeah. I, I, I yeah. saw a little bit it's of butter on my clothes. Let me strip down <laughs> my pants. Brad's like, Brad's like, so it's the only slasher you've seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like so many dumb decisions. Like, oh, so go, uh, we got we got time yeah. for one more, so we're gonna have to hurry it up. I'm so sorry, but thank you so much. Go, go, go. I'm so sorry. This is the last one we got time for. If you did not get your movie, we're, we have a booth right down there. You can talk to us. We can uh, we're more than happy to talk about it. But uh, yeah, we got to make this. Before we begin, I would just like to make a statement. Go green. <laughs> Whoa! He's got a Spartans cap on. Yeah. Go what? <laughs> Hard to be a Michigan fan of sports than anything other than the Lions right now. <laughs> that's uh, that's <laughs> very true. All right, we got like a minute left, so go ahead. Okay, so this is probably going to get a big reaction. This MCU movie is under is universally understood to be good. Which but, one? Uh, I cannot oh, stand see. Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> Uh, you, and, you, you and Brad oh, both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brad here. <laughs> it is so emotionally empty and vapid. I cannot care about anything that happens. Uh, it's like Loki and Thor get sequestered into the side quest while the actual movie is happening in Asgard. And the entire time I'm just thinking, get back to Asgard. Get back to the actual point of the movie. Uh, and I just can't really care about anything that happens. And going in, I avoided the trailers because I was so excited. Oh man, they're gonna do Ragnarok. It's gonna be this big epic battle against Loki. Yeah, uh, and I was just crushed when he was dealt with with a joke. Uh, Th thoughts, Brad? Uh, I agree. I thought it was obnoxious. <laughs> I thought it was like watching like a self-contained riff and not a good one. Like, am I supposed to be sad here or yucking it up at the devil's anus? Like, fuck, <laughs> fucking grow up. Dude. Like, I don't. And then Love and Thunder That's comes great. out, Thunder. in which the reviews are negative. I'm like, no shit, I thought that about the previous one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I totally avoided that because I A, Gore the God Killer is my favorite comic book art, and I didn't uh, want to see what they did to it, and B, the people who liked Ragnarok hated Love and Thunder. Uh, I didn't think it was much worse than Ragnarok. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, 
Uh, awesome. Thank you so very much. Everybody, thank you for uh, showing up. The whole idea was just to go out there, share your opinion, learn more about people. So definitely go out there and do that. Thank you so much. We'll be uh, at the booth over there. Channel Awesome booth. Hopefully we'll see you there. Bye-bye. And I don't want to start an interstate civil war, so can we all just agree, go Lions? <laughs> <laughs> agree on that? All right. Yes. All right. Thank you. Yeah, just the favorites of the shit.